cosmetic products help only 20, maximum 25 percent. Uh, 70 percent is fitness and body health. I think the external condition of body is a barometer of internal body condition and vice versa. It's not possible for you to have a healthy body and an unhealthy skin or an unhealthy skin and healthy body. They both go together. So that is very important, personal fitness and health. And the way, as I said, that I would go back to this, that the way I went on and did London and came back, and then of course, I'd like to explain the way I did London. And then of course, I didn't come back the same day. I was in London almost two months. But then I, then I started the same method for other countries, like I went to Cyprus, stayed two, three days, came back. Then on, I did the Festival of India in Japan. That was very, very successful, and we sold out on the first day completely. And I remember that uh, it was very unusual, but uh, our kajal finished while we were selling. And uh, the Japanese lady is very enamored with Indian eyes, you know, the kajal. And I found that with the kajal, uh, the eye cool, we were selling three or four more products. A day eye cream, a night eye cream, and an eye mask made from seagrass. <coughs> Finally, about uh, three or four hours later, we sold out of the kajal. And, uh, uh, and our sale was uh, affected, so I sent the girl to the room. I had about four dozen lying, and by the time she came back, the shutter was down. So through the uh, grill in the uh, store, she threw the kajal in, and one of my girls went in and picked it up. And uh, the moment we came back to the counter, uh, there must have been about a, over a hundred people waiting. We just had about seventy-two kajal. But they were still saying that we have come from here and I've come from there and I have to have the eye cool. As a fine, you queue up, you're getting it. When it came, uh, uh, the store had closed and the grill had come down. And this girl dropped those kajal through the uh, grill and she brought it back. The moment she came back and we started to sell, the tills had closed. So I said, fine, if the till is closed, we can't sell anymore. So they said, I've come from Hiroshima, I've come from Himeji, I've come from Su, I've come from Osaka. I said, I can't help you, you know, you, you tell the management and I'm happy to sell. So they made such a riot, <laughs> they opened the tills, we started sale and we went on till about 10 o'clock at night. We sold out every piece that we had. And next morning, I flew out, since there was no, nothing more to sell, I flew out to Hawaii. On the way back from Hawaii, I remember I did a press conference by the seaside in Hawaii that morning. I did a press conference at the mm -hmm. Tokyo airport the same evening at 4 o'clock because the Indian High Commission said that uh, the embassy that uh, we'd like you to speak there to the Japanese chemists. The same night I did a press conference at uh, the residence of our ambassador in Hong Kong and before 12 o'clock I had left for India to meet somebody from Australia next morning. So then that was the last time I did three countries in one day. But that particular method I still um, uh, hold on to of visiting a foreign country holding a press conference, meeting the uh, media and the press, the people. And then, of course, we now I do about, you know, European country or abroad, America, whatever, a week or 10 days, and I find that very, very effective. And that was an unusual award because um, it was the first award given uh, in 104 years to a woman. For 104 years, only men had received the award. So, uh, you have to say, uh, because I regarding the uh, this world's greatest woman entrepreneur award that I got was given by the success group in New York they um, uh, have one particular person every year who has done outstanding entrepreneurship worldwide and honor them in New York by having a special function for them or various meetings to speak on how they attained what they have in their particular capacity. But this was unusual because for 104 years, only men had received the award. I was the first woman in 105 years to get the award. And I said at the function that uh, I don't uh, mm, see why earlier no woman had received the award. I said, uh, I'm surprised you took 105 years to find me. The fact remains that uh, it was a very prestigious award because I mentally felt that finally India had arrived internationally because uh, a country like America had accepted the fact that 
So much work was done in a field totally untapped by one particular person to the extent that we were able to establish Ayurveda internationally. I strongly believe that India and Ayurveda will and must lead the entire world into the next century. The Western world has no option. In fact, the entire world has no option because if we do not have Ayurveda, what else do we have? We have only chemicals. It's interesting, but in the olden days, our ancient Mughal queens used diamond dust for highlights. They used a silt from running brooks mixed with the precious herbs and oil of musk and geranium oil and massaged it into their bodies, left it on to dry and wash it off. And it acted like a modern day derma breeze. They used uh, oil extracts from precious herbs to massage their bodies. They used uh, uh, haldi or turmeric mixed with milk in their fabled bodies. It helped control the growth of hair on the body. At the same time, made the skin satin smooth. They used uh, a herb from a tree called Missi, M-I-S-I, which made the lips maroon and kept it red almost for six weeks. They used the bark of the neem tree as an antiseptic. They used it as an antiseptic for the hair in their body. They used uh, diamond dust and dust from turquoise and rubies and emeralds as eye color, now replaced by a modern day eyeshadows. They used kajal made from a herb called tefla, hara pahira ola, which is used for centuries for sharpening vision. Uh, they used henna for their hair mixed with amla to make it brown black to give color and give the lustrous look. They used amla and shikakai as uh, shampoo. So we have centuries of uh, use of Ayurveda. There is no method that uh, anybody could prove otherwise. I remember an unusual uh, incident that happened that proved to me that Ayurveda was the answer to all the problems that we have in the world today. In fact, uh, when I came on television London and I showed uh, a particular mask, they said that Shanaz Hussain is healing the skin and hair with mysticism and prayers. And I came to on the television to explain that it's not mysticism and prayers that's working, it's the herb that's working, and for which the Western world does not really understand. And I said that um, uh, for anything that the Western world has no answer, East and India would have the answer. They must give us the problem first, because we have the centuries of people using plants and herbs and roots and fruits and flowers to cure and heal the body. In fact, the biggest proof that I had that Ayurveda did work was uh, when my father passed away, my mother became blind with shock. I said, um, it's very hard to live with the fact that mummy will never see. So I went back to my books and I told my chemist, I said, now try and create some herb or plant that would help her eyes. At the same time, I went to various doctors in Bombay and then consulted people in doctors in Russia and London and America, sent mummy's papers there and they wrote back that uh, uh, she will never see. She just became blind overnight, like at night she was perfect. Next morning, I walked in and she said, put on the lights and I went cold and I froze. So I realized the lights were on and mummy couldn't see. And, uh, I wrote to these doctors, they wrote back that she will never get back her eyes and uh, there's no point trying because she's at a state where she would never improve, so she just had to live that way. So I told mummy, I said, I don't think that much is going to happen now. I've tried my best and you know, try and do what we can, but beyond this, the doctors promised nothing and being a very spiritual woman, she took it very well. And, uh, I went back and we went into a particular program of trying to create herbs from whatever knowledge we had and make a eye drop tonic for her and uh, we did it finally and I gave mommy these drops I said you use these drops uh, like three times a day and uh, I went off to Dubai and I was away for five six months off and on and she was managing you know with the help of a nurse 